My name is Graham Barker. I'm presenting the paper Unraveling the Chronology and Character of Neanderthal and Modern Human Use of Shanidar Cave in Iraqi Kurdistan. And I'm presenting it on behalf of the following authors who are members of the <coughs> Shanidar Cave project. Shanidar Cave is in the Iraqi Kurdistan in the top corner of uh, Iraq near the frontier with um, Turkey and Iran. Um, see here it's a handsome south facing cave. Um, it, it, this gives you a sense of its location. This is from the Greater Zab River looking up, it, up to the cave here and then looking from the cave down through to the Greater Zab Valley down here. The same shots in summer. Uh, in winter these mountains, the Zagros Mountains, are snow covered um, and there's snow around the cave for several months a year. The cave of course is iconic in Paleolithic archaeology and there are wonderful excavations by Ralph Selecki between 1951 and 1960. He dug a large 14 meter trench in the center of the, the cavern. Huge logistical problems that he overcame. He had a large group of local workmen, massive rock falls, and all published in that remarkable book. Um, this is the summary sequence much shown of, this, of the, of the um, cultural sequence we thought was four main cultural layers, A, B, C, and D. Um, D was a middle Paleolithic Mysterian. C was an upper Paleolithic Aurignacian-like upper Paleolithic, which he gave the, local, the name Baradostian from the local Barados Mountains. He thought there was a 10,000 year hiatus in between. He could only date really the, the upper part of that, so that the, from about down to 40,000 because of radiocarbon dating, below that was effectively undated. Of course, he found a set of a series of Neanderthal bones uh, clearly associated with the, um, the layer D uh, Mysterian. Uh, no human bones were found in layer C. The Neanderthals, a unique collection of 10 Neanderthals, men, women, children. Um, he, he thought that some of them had died natural deaths in Rockfall and that some of them were true burials. Most famously, the burial thought to be buried with flowers, the flower burial, Shanidar number four, that's been at the center of debates both at the site and more generally about the whole question of Neanderthal death and burial. We've been working at the cave since 2015. This is how it appeared as we came back, as we started. Um, this is the Ralph Selecki plan. We've concentrated on this eastern extension here because this is where he found most of the Neanderthals. And so this is the picture in 1960 with Shanidar, the locations of one, three, and five marked, and Shanidar four was down here with people working on it at the time. The ranging poles we placed here, exactly the same location, so one was about there, five was there. By 2017, we'd gone from those locations down into his deep sounding, just a small part, and we see the figures are working down here, and they're standing more or less where Shanidar four, the flower burial, was found. And we've gone further deeper than them, about another metre and a half. And we're down at, we think we're down at what Selecki called a stalagmite there. And we're down at depths we've dated to 85,000 years ago. The methods, we've cleaned his sections. We've, we've collected a whole range of dating samples, C4, mostly C14 and OSL, a whole range of climate proxies, and environment proxies, including micromorphology, sampling the whole profile for environmental DNA. We've cut sample columns down through the clean sections and conducted larger excavations. And this is in order to um, collect uh, uh, sediment samples, which are then processed through um, a flotation system. Um, not the subject of this talk. Uh, surprisingly, against all our expectations, we found further Neanderthal skeletal remains. We found remains that Emma Pomeroy, the project's biological anthropologist, has shown clearly belong to uh, Selecki's Shanidar 5 and articulated remains, um, which we dated to around 50 to 55,000. And then down at that lower depth, more bones were found uh, in the section uh, right by where he found the Shanidar 4 flower burial. And we've exposed the upper body, the upper articulated bones of an um, adult. Uh, Neanderthal published early this year in Antiquity, led again by Emma Pomeroy. Um, the main focus though is to talk about the Middle Paleolithic, Upper Paleolithic transition. 
This is the first main suite of Oxford radiocarbon dates, and certainly there isn't a 10,000 year hiatus in the use of the cave. Um, you can see Shanidar 5 is, is dated around about there. Um, this is part of that um, transition zone area. This is the Shanidar 5 location, this gully. So below here, the expectation is Mysterian, and somewhere above here, the expectation Baradostian. Um, this is uh, shown schematically here. These are our column samples that we've excavated. The Shanidar 5 location here, the Shanidar 4 location here, and where we've got to at the base there. Now the occupation evidence, the Baradostian occupation evidence that we've exposed consists of small halves, thin ash layers that on excavation like this, and they turn out to be what the micromorphology shows, are single event halves. These are more of them here, one's there, one's there, one's down there, single event halves, producing radiocarbon dates, mostly 42 to 38,000, wider brackets 45 to 33. And the, the botanical evidence within them, in the micromorphology sections, shows visits at times of interstadial conditions. The Mysterian Neanderthal occupation evidence underneath Shannon R5 is very, very similar. This is a good example. This is a single event half about 25 centimeters below the Shanidar 5 location. This is the section through it. This is looking down. It's got stake holes, we think, around it. That's another section near a remnant of a, of a half near the Shanidar 3 location. Um, down below, the occupation levels that are down at the levels of the lower Neanderthals, the Shanidar 4 and so on, they do appear to be more substantial. The lithic technologies, we've got Baradostian classic types and classic Mysterian types. They're small assemblages, a lot of overlap, but there are these clear typological indicators. And when we look at these across that transition zone, this is the, just a part of the stratigraphic matrix from the project. These are the excavated context, the stratigraphic units in order. This is 1832, which has got Shanidar 5 and then Mysterian Baradostian tools and beads. And what we're finding is that the Mysterian and Baradostian forms in this zone are interdigitated, apart from in this one context where both types are found together. They're interdigitated, and also there are both Baradostian and Mysterian forms below Shanidar 5 in clearly sealed conditions under massive rocks that we've, uh, we've had to break up. Um, same with, with um, pierced shell small beads that we're finding, um, a suite of them above the Shanidar 5 location, the identical one also found down here with Baradostin material below the, um, at the level of these, um, these so-called heart, these, these Neanderthal, as it were, halves, um, with a broad level. This is a, an incised shell object from a Baradostin context we published from up here. The environmental evidence, We've got here a schematic of the sections through. We can recognize, we think, MIS 3, 4, 5A, B, and C deposits. This is the location of the upper, the Neanderthal, Shanidar 1 and 5, Shanidar 4, and our new find, so called Shanidar Z, are down at this level. And if we take the sediments, the plants, the mollusks, they all combine to indicate that human activity is especially occurring during interstadial conditions. And so to summarize, we have Baradostian burnt layers, primarily at 45 to 33, Neanderthals, 50 to 55, Shanidar 5, 75,000 years ago for the new Neanderthal and the flower burial group. We find short-term occupations in predominantly interstadial conditions, um, on both sides or above and below in the, in the transitional zone and up through the Baradostian layers. And in the tradition zone, clearly stratified, is the first Baradostian material culture is being used, it appears, when Neanderthals were still around. And that raises the obvious question, when were modern humans first present? And that's one of the targets for the uh, eDNA sampling uh, down the profile. And this is our acknowledgements. Many thanks. <laughs>